He knew exactly who was going to be in this room this morning, and he knew exactly what we needed to hear. The first time the Lord gave me this message, and you probably remember, but it was about last month when we were having the storm I was supposed to preach that weekend. And the Lord laid this message upon my heart. And I sat with the Lord, and he developed the message in my heart, and then we had the storm, and I wasn't able to come, and I was highly upset that I wasn't able to come. But, you know, God knows exactly the footsteps of the righteous and exactly who was going to be in this room this morning and exactly what you were facing. So he knew that we needed to hear this this morning, and this not only is for you, but this is for me. This is for me first. God's grace is greater. And I'm coming from the book of Exodus, chapter 33, starting in verse 12. Exodus, chapter 33, starting in verse 12. And while you're turning there, this book was written by a man named Moses, who was an eyewitness of all the miracles that had happened in the wilderness, in the book of Exodus, he was the lawgiver. And he was the one that was called to deliver. I don't know about you, but this man had a call of God on his life that tried to be turned around by the enemy. And I want to remind you this morning that you have a call of God specifically on your life. And if the enemy has been trying to fork um, turn it around or put an obstacle before you or whatever the case may be remember that the call of God upon your life is without repentance Amen. and the enemy will try to set traps and try to put you on another path and even our flesh at times might try to send us on another path but God has a plan and God had a call on this man's life and he has a call on yours. And what I like about this book is this book was written during a time period from the departure of Egypt to the plains of the wilderness of Moab and everything that was in between. And I want to encourage you today that God is the God of the beginning and God is a God of the end and he is the God of everything in between. Amen. And he's writing your story. Yes, Lord. He's writing it and he's writing it in love. Yeah. He loves you so much that no matter what you're facing this morning, it's for a purpose. Maybe it's for someone else to show them in the midst of this situation, they're still loving their king. Yes. Why? Because he's alive and he's living and he's moving and he's breathing and he's inside of you and he's working out your favor. My brother right here, I seen you were in an accident in your truck, but you're sitting in church this morning because God had his hand upon you. God has a call upon your life. And he had his hand on you in that truck. Hallelujah. Where was the book written? It was written in the wilderness. We have some stories when we're walking through the wilderness. Yeah. When we're going through a hard time or a difficult place or a dry place. Those are the places that God can show up. Those are the places that God can move. And we can say, it was nothing of myself, but only of the glory of my God. Only by the move of his spirit, only by the touch of his hand, was this able to come forth or able to happen or able to change my heart. Because he's the only one that can do it. So he wrote this book while he was traveling in the wilderness. I want to encourage you this morning that you are in a progressive sanctification process. Yes. You are in a progressive process this morning. But God's grace is greater than every obstacle that you will face in this process. Because God is trying to get you from point A to point B. And the, there's a promised land. There's promises to obtain while you're walking through the wilderness, but there's an ultimate promised land. And the ultimate promised land, we know we're going to be worshiping around the throne of God. But you can still grab a hold of the promises of God while you're on this earth. That's why he died and sent his spirit for 
for you. So you can lay a hold of the kingdom of God on this earth. The same spirit that is in heaven now dwells in this earth and dwells in you. Yeah. So you can have what he has to offer. That never ending peace that he offers. That never ending joy that he offers. That never ending deliverance that he offers. Yeah. I want to encourage you this morning through the process of the progressive wilderness. That you lay hold of the water that comes from the rock. Yeah. That you lay hold yeah. of the manna that can come down from heaven. Yeah. That you lay hold of the one that can open up your Red Sea. You lay hold of the one that can make the Jordan River go walk through on dry ground. You lay hold of the promises of God and the word of God that says I still heal the day. And I'm concerned with the little things in your life. You lay because he's a God that he shall not lie. He will not lie to you. And I was going to read this actually at towards the end of my sermon. And excuse me for using my phone. But I have to read this. Now, I love the children. And I love the youth. But I text Leah. Talking about the love of God. I text Leia and I was just encouraging her and her walk in the Lord because she had shared some things that happened at school and one of the teachers wasn't being so, so nice. And Leia, instead of being like any teenager that normally would like be snooty, she sat down at her desk and she prayed. And she said, God, same way you can soften the hearts of kings, you can soften my teacher's heart. She didn't, she didn't get all up in her feelings and emotional and go tell her teacher off, which I have seen. She sat down and bowed her heart before God, and God moved on that teacher's heart. And the teacher got up at the end of class and told her that she could hand in the homework or the work that was meant to be handed in. That she was telling her she couldn't. So God moved on the teacher's heart. Why? Because he wanted to prove to Leah that he was living and that he was alive and that he loved her and that he was concerned with the little things. So I, I, I loved that. And then she was telling me the Holy Spirit was all over her and she's weeping. And I was like, go ahead, girl, cry it out. Because God loves his children. He loves his children. And as I was, I wrote her and I was encouraging. It's hard to go to high school. High school was hard. Grade school was hard. And it's getting worse. So pray for your children. Pray. You know what? I'm going to get on a rabbit trail for a second. But you can bring your children to church. And we can teach them the word of God. Pastor Matt can. And, and in the Sunday school we can. In the baby room we can. And we can have youth group. But you know where it starts? It starts in the home. The home is where it starts. The home is where we need to get on our face. And be praying for our children. And praying for our loved ones. And laying a hold of God. Because God's grace is greater. Let it didn't have to turn out that way. She could have ended up treating the teacher another way. But I know that Jess was on her face praying for her children and teaching her children the word of God. And this is the fruit of your labor. This is the fruit of your labor. Not only that, but we got Royal too. And Royal comes in the group and he's learning the word of God. And Leah writes me this. I just encouraged her. And she writes me this. And I read this to Nia. And Nia and I were like halfway in tears in the car. Because this sounds like a minister of the gospel. She says, this is Leah's words. Amen. I always get super excited and emotional. Every time I see him move. One thing that I always think about is how amazing is his love. The love between man is so different than the love of God. The love between a relationship between a man and a woman or like two best friends is something so different. Because the best friends can talk about you or in relationships, we can let each other down and we can mess up. But that's not the same with the love of God. That's what 
I realized that God's love is perfect and that he will never let us down. We can always count on him. His love never fails. Sometimes I think about how amazing he is. He loves us so much that he laid down his life for us to, that we would have forgiveness, that we would have grace, peace, eternal life, and etc. People can search and search for a perfect love, but the perfect love is only found in Jesus. Leah, would you like to take the podium? <laughs> Praise God. Yes. Praise God. And I want to encourage you with that this morning because your prayers are not going unheard. Yes. God's grace Hallelujah. is greater. Yes. So keep pressing. Keep smacking those arrows on the ground that are coming at your children. Yes. Keep fighting on your hands and your knees because the battle belongs to the Lord. Yes. The battle, you know, we don't know. Moses had that call in his life when he was a baby and it was trying to be taken away from him at that age. We don't know the call of God that is on these young children's lives and on the person that's sitting next to you life. You could be just that deliverer that brings the word of truth in your high school that brings the word of truth that people are delivered because you're worshiping your God and you're worshiping Amen. your king Amen. with your lifestyle. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The purpose of this book was that God chose a nation, established a nation, set a nation apart, and kept his promises. Amen. He chose a nation. He established a nation. So he chose each one of us in this room. And he is establishing us, rooted and grounded in this place, in the word of God. And then there has to be obedience. So there is an aspect of relationship with God that we must have as his people. Because he wants a people that are separate and that are holy and that are set apart. And then he confirms his promises over and over yes. and yes. over again. Yes. And you can say, God, I know that you are faithful. Show me again. And he's not yes. mad at that. He doesn't get upset with you because you ask him to prove himself to you again. Lord, show me again. Yes. Show me you're able again. Remind me again of your promises. Yes. Remind me of what you told me 13 years ago. Yes. And I still haven't seen it to pass. Remind me again, Lord, of what you're going to do and how powerful you are. Remind me again of your power and your faithfulness. Remind me again how you can heal and deliver, Lord. Remind me again. God, remind me again. Remind me again, Lord. Remind me of your love again. His grace is greater. And it's all available through the blood of Jesus. You didn't have to do anything. We don't have to muster anything up. We don't have to be perfect. You don't have to do everything to the T and dot every I and cross every T because his blood was enough. Amen. His blood was enough. His blood is enough. And his blood will always be enough. So the mouth of the roaring lion is shut by the blood of Jesus Christ. Whatever the enemy has been telling you this morning or whatever has been going on in your family, the blood still speaks and the blood is still enough. Amen. Thank his you. grace is greater. Yes. And I want to encourage you this morning that God desires to advance his people. Mm. Yes. Buckle in for the ride because God desires to advance his people. Hallelujah. And the people that he chooses to advance, his presence will be greater. So that's what I desire. I know that's Pastor Matt's desire. We want to see this spirit. I'm not, I'm not just talking about coming in church this morning, playing church, singing a couple songs, hearing a message, and leaving. I want to tell you something this morning. The spirit of God wants to move 
in this place. He wants to uh, arrest your heart. He wants to engulf you. He wants to grab a hold of you and never let go. the Spirit of God wants to possess every aspect of your life. Yes. He wants to apprehend you. He wants to take control of you. My heart's desire is God, let me be spirit led, spirit filled, and spirit controlled. Everything by your spirit, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. And He wants to do that in this place. But it starts with us individually. And then we come together corporately, and He can move. But we got to get in His presence. We got to separate ourselves to him. So those he advances and who, those he wants to move forward. And listen, he doesn't just pick and choose who he wants to move forward. He wants to move all of us forward. Yes. It's us that choose to stay stagnant. Yeah. It's us that choose to stay comfortable or in old mindsets or not wanting to change the way we thought about. Listen, as I was learning the message of the cross and learning a lot of things, I had had to learn that my way was wrong and what I thought and how I thought I was supposed to serve the Lord by praying six listen I don't know if I ever told you this but I'll put myself out there I used to pray on the hardwood floors on my knees on purpose for hours thinking that I was earning something with the Lord no all I earned was bruised knees and it hurt when I got up but I wrong with prayer as you can tell I love to pray I want to pray let's well I'll just sit here and pray with y'all if that's what you want to do but that aspect of going before the Lord and thinking I was earning something before right. him right. was wrong right. I pray because I believe I pray because I believe that the blood still speaks and the blood is enough. I don't try to be righteous by my prayer life. My prayer life doesn't make me righteous. But because I believe, I go to the blood. I go to the king because I believe that he is able to move just like he moved on Leah's teacher. He's still able to move today. I read my word because I need my word. I need to be like David and encouraging myself in the Lord and preaching to myself and standing on the word of God because everything in this world system is contrary to the word of God. So you have to be saturated in the word of God and know what you believe. Amen. We say that we're Christians, but what, what do we believe? Come on. I, I never forget the class. Pastor Larson sat us down and we had to act like we were building our own church and we had to write down what is it that your church stands for and what is it that you believe? And I sat there and I was like, those are really good questions. Like, how do I write write this out and write this down? But once you understand the word of God and start seeking the face of God, you know what you believe. Amen. So think about what you believe this morning. Are you believing a lie? Okay. Or are you believing the truth this morning? That's good. And those who make a choice to advance, he will show them his glory. So maybe we should ask ourselves, why haven't I seen your glory, Lord? Mm. Has the Lord been trying to advance his people and we decided to pitch up a tent and stay where we're at? Mm. And I say that to myself right, right. because so many times God has been trying to move and to advance and to bring me forward and deeper in him. And I'm like, I'm just comfortable where I'm at. I'm okay where I'm at. But listen, when we get comfortable where we're at and we get and we stay there, God's going to stir the nest. Yeah, yeah. He's going to stir the nest and everything's going to start moving. And you're like, well, why is this happening? Why is that happening? But you know why? Because he wants us to seek him, that we may find him, that we may know what he has for us, that we could advance. Because he loves you. Yeah. Not because he wants to hurt you. Not because he's a harsh taskmaster. Not because, because I used to think that. When my father died, I thought God was a harsh taskmaster. But God was allowing it to draw me to him. 
him to draw and I chose at that moment to walk away until he decided to really get my attention and I would cry out. So we have a free will, we have a free choice. Hallelujah. And the scripture reads in verse 12, And Moses said unto the Lord, See, you say unto me, Bring up this people. Let me say that again. Bring up this people, and you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know thee by name. And now has also found grace in my sight. Verse 13. Now, therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way, that I may know you, that I might find grace in your sight, and consider that this nation, this nation is your people. Amen. This nation is your people. Verse 14. And he said, my presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. I'm going to skip to verse 18 for time's sake. And he said, I beseech you, show me your glory. Show me your glory. God, we want you to show us your glory this morning. Father, I pray that you would take over this service Lord, and that you would have your way like never before. God, I pray, Lord God, that we would meet and have an encounter with the living God this morning. Lord, we came here to be changed. And we came here to meet with you. So, Lord, I pray, God, let us, let us not walk away dry. Fill us up again, Lord. And remind us of your faithfulness. God, anoint us to hear your word and anoint me to preach this message, Lord, because you have a word in due season that you want your people to hear, God. God, and we're believing you to move, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Pastor Matt, would you come up here, please? Leah, Royal, and Robert, please come up. Manuel, this is in your honor. Manuel says, Angela, why are you doing object lesson? <laughs> no, I always like object lessons because I like to show what God is speaking to my heart. If you would all step up here, please. Okay, Pastor Matt, I want you down here on the end. You're going to be the worshiper, Pastor Matt, so I need your hands up. Robert, you are going to turn your back to the Lord. So, I want to turn around, Robert. Yeah, you're going to be the prayer, so have your hands here and you're going to be in surrender so just give it to him like this royal okay so this God speaks to his people right a lot of the times when we position our, God can speak through anything really he's spoken to me through the trees he's spoken to me all kinds of places but normally when we position ourselves before the Lord that's when we really can hear him because our intent is to listen we want to hear what he has to say well Pastor Matt is worshiping. So that is an aspect of positioning your heart before the Lord so that we can receive what he, we ha he has for us and we can give him glory. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. When you sing a song um, to the Lord, first of all, it can be a song from your heart. You hear me or Naya or whoever else singing from their heart, just singing a song out of nowhere. That's just a, a song from our heart because we love the Lord. Because sometimes we can hear words to a song and you could be thinking about, I want that Big Mac after church today. <laughs> okay? So, no, for real, come on. So, but when you position yourself before the Lord to hear from him, what happens? He can drop a promise in your heart. He drops a promise in your heart. But you can't even see it. Right, right. You can't see it yet. It's going to take some time to develop. And Robert here, he's turned his back on the Lord. He's been, he's, something happened and he was so angry with God. He's like, you know what? I'm going to go to church today, but I'm going to fold my hands. I'm going to sit in the back and I'm just going to, I don't want to hear from God today. So there's Robert. Way to go, Robert. But you know what? Even in our rebellion, 
God still can reach us. Even yes. when we're not believing in his grace, God's grace is greater. Amen. Leia, Leia, she's praying. She's receiving God's promise. So Pastor Matt is already beginning to develop, but you can't see it so clear yet. Each person has received a promise. Here's Robert. It's coming through, but it's not quite there yet. And then we have Royal. Royal just surrenders. Surrender, constant surrender. You guys can put your hands down, so I know you're probably tired. <laughs> constant surrender to the Lord. The Lord knows the beginning from when he gave you that promise. Amen. To the whole development process. Mm. Robert, you can turn around because I know you love Jesus. <laughs> the whole development process, whether he reaches us, see, look, Royals didn't even, it's not, you can't even see it at all. But Royal, like Mary, is allowing it to be birthed in his heart. See, through the whole process, remember those old school roles? We used to have to take them to like CVS or whatever and get them developed. But they were like a long roll like this. But you could only go from one picture to the next. Well, see, if this was one person, at one point in their life, they're worshiping. They get a little upset with the Lord. They might be falling into doubt and unbelief. But then their prayer life and, and they're sitting there and they're surrendering to the Lord. The Lord doesn't just clock out this moment in your life and say, I'm done with you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't. He woos you and he calls you and he forgives you and he works with you. Because on those old school roles, there was a bunch of little pictures, right? And God knew the beginning and he knew the end and he knew the development process in between. And he's not going to just take one clip of your life and say the promise is not going to come to pass now. Because you, you messed up and you don't believe me. No, he's going to turn that situation around. He's going to draw us closer and he is going to develop the process and he's going to take this photo and he's not even going to remind Robert of that wow. Amen. Oh, yes. he's going to forgive him and he's going to still develop the promise and it's still going to come to pass Amen. God's grace was greater in every situation and God's grace is greater in yours Amen. thank you guys thank you, Lord. hallelujah hallelujah his grace is greater than every mountain. His grace is greater than every high thing that exalts itself. His grace is greater than every sickness and every bondage. His grace was greater than Hannah's barren womb. Yeah. And I want to give you this thought. Because Hannah is one that has spoken to me time and time again about waiting on promises. And the same God that put the desire in Hannah's heart to have a baby was the same God that shut up her womb. Yes, Lord. Think about that. He put the desire in her heart, a burning desire, and then he shut up her womb until the time of development had come to pass and she was ready. And at the moment she said, God, this baby will be given for your kingdom. He knew that she was ready. And he put a child inside of her. We need to get to the place where everything is about the glory and the kingdom of God. That it's all about him and nothing about us. Amen. But he still knew the promise would come to pass. Even though she was being attacked day and night and chatter in her ear. The promise still came to pass. God is greater. His grace is still greater. I love, um, actually two things. Let me share this with you. I was talking about nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And Shane came up to me afterwards and I loved what he said. And I was like, man, I wish I would have said that. So I'm saying it today. <laughs> 
Jesus was sweating blood in the garden of Gethsemane saying, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And he was looking to go into the cross for all of humanity. This is something that he needed to do that we were going to be set free. But Shane came up to me afterwards and he goes, it wasn't just the cross. There was a resurrection. <laughs> There, yeah, there was the cross, but there was still a resurrection. You know, and so many times we can think about, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And we can get caught up in the agony of the process. And then there's the cross, but then there's the resurrection. And there's a power in the resurrection. And we look to the cross for access to the things that we need. But that thing that you might see that is dead right now, there's going to be a resurrection. Amen. There's going to be a resurrection. Hallelujah. And Pastor Larson, he stole this from someone else, but I'm going to steal it from him. He said, you, you don't have no problem greater than dead and buried. Amen. And Jesus handled dead and buried. And we don't have a problem that's any greater than dead and buried. So our God's grace is greater to handle anything. Hallelujah. And Listen, we got to get this this morning. I don't care if I get to my text or not. We got to get this this morning. God is able yeah. to handle anything that comes our way. Anything that comes our way. And we begin to see the relationship between God and Moses throughout the chapter and throughout the book. And what I love about Moses is he was actively seeking God constantly. He was constantly running into the presence of God. He was constantly going to seek the face of God. He was constantly in prayer and not just for himself but for the Israelites. He was constantly in prayer, seeking the heart of God on the behalf of other people. Because when we forget about, I'm not saying don't pray for yourself, because you should, but when we forget about ourselves and seek God even on the behalf of other people, God can still meet our needs. Amen. God will meet our needs because we're not making about what we need. We're making it about what, what they need. Yes, Lord. And he wants he wants to birth that in our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. I want to encourage you. Prayer. This church, this church is going to hinge on prayer. The birth of the spirit of this church is going to hinge on prayer. If you can come on in Sunday mornings at 9, please, I pray that that room gets so filled that we got to find somewhere else to pray. Right, right. Thank you, Lord. The God because you know why? Jesus sent the multitudes away, went up to the mountain, and prayed alone. Yes. Why? Because Jesus got up in the morning, early rising, great before the day, departed to a solitary place to pray. Why? Because it came to pass that Jesus was seen praying all night long. So why do we feel like we're going to come to church and God is just going to move? Think about that. Hmm. Now he does in his mercy. Amen. And he does in his grace. Yes. But how much greater if we came with an expectancy? Yes. Yes. How much greater if we were already breaking up the ground before we got here? How much greater if we were already sitting in his presence and ready to receive yes, from him yes. before we walked in the doors? Yes. How much greater if you were woke up this morning full of the Holy Ghost and you came in and heard somebody else full of the Holy Ghost and somebody else full of the Holy Ghost and then the person that's down hears you full of the Holy Ghost and they rise up in the Holy Ghost. We should all be moving in that way. We want the Holy to move, we need to pray. Scripture says in the book of Acts that they were all in one accord in one place and suddenly the heavens opened up. God's grace is greater. God's grace met them in that place. And it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. All of them. Oh, no, I, when I read that this morning, I was like, whoa, all of them were filled. Yes, Lord. Why? Because.
because they came expecting. They came believing. They ca- I don't care if you think I'm crazy this morning. I need you to hear me this morning. Amen. God wants to tell you something. He is up to something. And he wants to advance his people. Yes. But he, we need to position ourselves separately and corporately that he may move. He wants to move. He wants his presence when they drive by on Lydia Street to be felt right at the front of the church. He wants the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation. He wants people to walk in here and just begin the week Because the presence of God is so tangible and so thick. He wants to heal bodies in the midst of his people. He wants to do it, but we need to position ourselves that we may see it. And God reveals himself to Moses in a cloud. Think about this. A cloud is made up of water droplets. Moses was standing face to face with a cloud. And I was thinking about how tangible would that have been? Water droplets. Like you could feel the presence of God. Sense the presence of God like a flow of water. I was like, man, I want that. I want to be able to feel them like water. Like living water just rushing all over. I want that for this church. But then it said clouds were formed by the heat of the sun. Now I was like, wow. So sometimes God has to heat up some situations that his presence can come. That we might seek his face and tangibly feel his presence by the heat of the sun. And then clouds were known to be whisked and blown away at high winds. You ever feel like everything is beating against you and you just can't catch a break? Like when you go to the beach and the wave knocks you down and you get back up and it's right there again. And it, uh, No, I guess I'm the only one from the beach. I miss the beach. Okay, so. <laughs> so, and you get back up, but it's whisked away under high winds, but the cloud is still there. And they're called cirrus clouds, and they're perfectly white, and they only come in fair and pleasant times. But the cloud is always there, whether it was rain, whether it was heat, whether it was winds, whether it was fair and pleasant, there's always a cloud. There's always a cloud, and I'm like, God, let your glory cloud rest on Crossway Ministry. Thank you, Lord. Let it rest in your homes. Let it rest in the children's area. Let it rest in the baby area. Let it rest on peak roofing and where we hold youth group and their business. Let it rest when we go to our jobs. Let your glory, let, I want to be so engulfed in the grace and the glory of God that that's what people see. His grace and his glory. And that's what I can see all through Moses' life. Is that he was just consumed with the grace and the glory of God. God acts on the behalf of his elect. So not only did he deliver you, but he wants to divinely protect you and develop you through your walk. And you can see that through the impossibilities of the Red Sea. But you know what happened to the children of Israel is when they were faced with something that seemed impossible, they wanted to go back and they blamed the leadership. And I want to tell you this. You don't come to church to meet with the leadership. Right, right. Even though fellowship is very important. But you come to church to meet with God. Yes. And don't complain about the leadership or about what God, what God did do, didn't do. 
Because we might quit right before he works a miracle. Come on. If they came face to face with the Red Sea and they actually decided to turn around and go back, God was about to perform a miracle right. that was absolutely impossible. And he said, stand still, see the salvation of the Lord. For these Egyptians, which you see now, you will see forever. No more. No more. No more. So that thing or things or whatever's going on in your life, God is about to work a miracle. So don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. And seek the face of God. There's a rod in your hand. You have the power of the blood of Jesus. You have the power of the cross. You are a child of God and a child of the king. And you have access. Access has been granted. So you are able to access him that he would I'm not talking about you, Pastor Matt, but I've been guilty, okay, to look at the people instead of look at my God. Right, Come on. Right, right. Look at my God. I've been guilty to look at this situation and to blame the people involved instead of to look at my God. God, what are you developing in me? Because you have a plan for my life. What are you developing in me? A miracle after miracle after miracle happened. We talked about it earlier. He provided manna in the wilderness. You need some manna this morning? You don't see where the... Listen, Nye and I in three months, if we don't figure it out, ain't going to have a place to live. But you know what? I just sit back and I am in such peace. And I, I woke up like, I don't even understand it. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that, and I'm saying this out loud, so God help me. So, because you know the enemy's going to come as soon as I walk out the door with something. But I am resting in the presence of God, knowing that he is able to take care of me because he's been faithful before and he will be faithful again. And I have to stand on that. I have to believe that. I have to trust that. And he's proven himself. And he's going to rain manna. Naya, he's going to rain manna from heaven. And I'm believing that with all of my heart. And then the Amalekites came and he fought, fought the battle and he defeated the Amalekites. But you know what is crazy? Is the Israelites kept becoming unsatisfied and ungrateful. Can we see ourselves? God just moves. Awesome service. Blesses you with great people. Somebody came up to you, gave, you know, was nice to you that hasn't been nice to you in years. You know, all these things are happening. You know, grandkids are loving you. Family members are coming over that you haven't seen before in a long time. And then all of a sudden we wake up one morning and we don't have one thing that we think we should have. And we're murmuring, complaining, ungrateful. God isn't showing up. God isn't moving. He's never... I told me and I were in prayer the other day, and I said, God, I have more than I have ever had in my life. Wow. I have more than I've ever had in my life. And he, if he was to take everything naturally that I own, I still have more than I've ever had in my life. Really, I am free. Man, if y'all would have known me before... You would have been like, oh, my Lord, walk on the other side of the street. Here that girl comes again. I was mean and I was nasty and I was rude and I was a thief and I was a liar. Mm, help us, Lord. Yes. But God was able. Yes. God's grace, God's grace yes. is able. Yes. And now I can walk around and maybe not have everything I think that I need, but I have more than I ever before. Amen. And I'm still advancing. Amen. Listen, we are, we are still advancing. God's grace is greater. We might have had a valley. We might have had a Goliath. We might have had some lions. We might have had a fire roaring. We might have had some things we had to face. But God is still advancing his people. And not one hook shall be left behind. So if you walked in this morning and said, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I'm declaring over you by the word of God that not one hook is going to be left behind. And not just you, Moses. Stand in the gap for your family. Stand in the gap for 
for your people. Because the people you know aren't the people I know. So I better be praying for the people I know. And you pray for the people you know. Because not one hoof is going to be left behind. But when he was trying to advance his people in the beginning of this chapter, in 33 verse 1, it said, The Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go up. Depart and go up to the land which the people which I have given the people and have brought you out of the land of Egypt unto the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying unto thy seed will I give it, unto the land flowing with milk and honey. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for his people. But what was the process? Go up. But what would you have to do before that? Depart. So I suggest to you this morning, and I say this to myself, there might be some things that we need to depart from. Yes. Mm, that's good. Wow. There might be some things, some thinking that yes. we need to get rid of. Yes. Some unforgiveness that we need to lay down. Some bitterness. Some uh, just le maybe legalistic mindset that we know. No, 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 no. God's grace is still greater. Yes. Yeah. God's grace is greater. Maybe we should get the idea out of our head that our neighbor should be further, further than what they already are. Mm. Let, let them work out their relationship with God with fear and trembling. Yes, Amen. See, depart. God's trying to deal with us. Right. He's trying to deal with you. That's good. Maybe we need to lay down some things that I don't know what you need to lay down. And I'm not telling you what I need to lay down. We just need to lay it down. Amen. So we can advance. Because I want to advance. Hallelujah. And if you are, we're holding on to some baggage that we got to drag. And God's trying to advance us. Just let it go, please. So we can all advance together. I want to advance together. We are a body. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I'm not leaving my foot over there. Yeah. I want my foot. Yes. And I want my hands. I want you to come with me. Amen. Thank Every you. single one of us. But you know what happens? We depart and we're moving on our journey. And then we grow impatient. Come on. And that's what happened with the people of Israel. They grew impatient and they went to Aaron and said, what is Moses doing up there? And they built a golden calf and they started to worship this golden calf. And I just want to say this. I am thankful for you. And I am thankful for your leadership. And I am thankful that you do not bend and you do not bow and you do not compromise. And I believe that we can strong leadership will set the tone for the congregation. And uh, let me tell you this, you must be a leader on your job. Do not bend and do not compromise. We must be a leader in our household. Do not bend and do not compromise. We must be a leader around our friends. Do not bend and do not compromise. I'm talking about the body of Christ. These were God's people. And we know we're human. So it can get messy. Yes, yes. But do not bend and do not compromise because the world is watching. God is watching. Your children are watching. Other, other people in the body are watching. And that's not to bring a, a fear, but we should have a reverential fear of God. And we should have a reverential fear that we don't want another one to stumble because we've compromised. That will be upon us. So there's a reverence that we must have as the body of Christ. But still, even if we do, 
I told you this story, girl, at my job. I went in, head down, all beat up. And she had been watching me live for the Lord for years. And she said, Angela, it was, and this was about a guy, and I'll just put myself out there, but I was not happy. And he, she goes, Angela, do not let him snuff out your fire. Amen. She wasn't even saved at the time. And the Holy Ghost hit me in my heart so hard that I wouldn't, at that moment, and we are human, so he's not surprised at our humanity. Right. But, and he gives mercy, and he gives grace. So there's a line, and there's a balance. But it hit me to the degree that I was like, wait a second. Get up and believe your God. Yes. And let this girl see that you believe your God. And she even got, she got, um, she got saved with Naya. And I'm actually going to be doing her wedding. So that was cool. But so now, but God used it to show me that the world was watching us. Oh, hallelujah. And not just watching like... Like, she was really watching me, even in my attitude. It was my attitude that presented off to her. Mm. Okay. So maybe we need to let some attitudes go. Mm. Whatever it is, but God is raising up leadership in this generation. So not only depart, but get up and walk forward. Walk forward for what he has for you, and I don't know what has been holding you back today, but I suggest to you, get up and walk forward. I want to suggest this to you too. God's presence will not dwell where sin dwells. So what happened? Moses had to move his tent outside of the congregation because he wanted to meet with God, and a holy God could not dwell where sin was dwelling. So those that w wanted God went out. Yeah. They went out. And they were like, wait a second. The presence of God isn't here. I got to go. That's Wherever right. he's going, I'm going. And that's what we want. Yes, yes. We want wherever the presence of God is, we want it. Thank you, so maybe sin in our lives. I'm going to point me out, okay? Sin in my life. Maybe sin in my life. I don't know what it is. God's going to have to show me. But maybe that's hindering the spirit of God from moving specific way in my life yeah. but you know what I need to do get on my face and ask them what is it God that you want to change that you want to move why am I not sensing you or feeling you the way that I I desire to Lord yeah. so he, he went and he brought the tent outside I do not want this to be a body of believers where the tent is outside God we want your rain to rain down inside we want your glory to dwell in this place right here because we're people of surrender. We're people that worship our king. Not just in song. Not just with our mouths. But with our heart. Amen. With our life. Because even though we lift our hands on Sunday morning. That doesn't mean that our hearts are bowed before him. Again. But God, check my heart every time, every day, every moment, every second, that my heart would be bowed before you and I would be found worshiping my king. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah. And Moses said unto the Lord, see, this is verse 12, thou sayest unto me, bring up this people. Hallelujah, bring up this people. God promised Moses that he was going to bring the people into the promised land. And I believe that God has promised Pastor Matt, he gave birth it in his heart to build this church, to make this church, to raise this church up. And I'm believing that this church is going to be filled. Yeah. And that God is going to bring us as a body not one left behind into the promised land. Well, what is the promised land? More victory. Thank you, Lord. More peace. Yes. More power. More joy. More of his presence. More deliverance. And don't worry. God's going to bless his people. God's not stingy. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Like we are. <laughs> God holds no, withholds no good thing from those who walk uprightly. Amen. And I am believing that 
for myself and for my family and for the body of Christ. And God tells Moses, you have found grace in my sight and I know your name. So remember this, every time you go before him, he knew your name when he was nailed to Calvary. He had your name upon his heart and upon his lips. So when you don't see everything going his your way, remember you have found grace in his sight and you he knows your name. Hallelujah. And what it found mean, it means to attain it to appear, to exist, to come to pass. You found grace. Grace is a person. Grace is Jesus. So if we want grace, the person of grace, to appear, we have to present ourselves, depart, go up, go up to where he wants you to be at and to position yourself before him. And grace was there. And grace is through the process, and grace is at the end. Grace is the only thing that's going to carry you through the whole time. It's just grace. Just grace. And grace existed for Moses when he was a baby and almost destroyed. And grace existed for Moses when he went before Pharaoh and he didn't even have the ability to speak. Yeah. But God used his inadequacies and used him. God used him over and over again when everyone came against him. God's grace yes. was upon his life yes. when no one trusted him. Everyone turned and worshipped idols. God's grace was upon his life. And Moses was still broken for the people. Mm. Wow. Imagine that. <clears throat> I read a Facebook post recently that said, you don't, it was something along the lines of, you don't know grace until you sat at the table with your Judas. Mm. All this whole congregation turned against Moses. And you know what he said to the Lord? He said, Lord, if you do not save them and give them grace, Blot my name out of your book. Mm. That's powerful. That's powerful for such a leader to have such a heart for the people that he would sacrifice his own life. Sounds like Jesus to me. Amen. Amen. Sounds like Jesus' heartbeat to me. And that's what God does with us. He births his heart in us. And that's what the Spirit of God wants to do in this place. I know y'all know this song, How Sweet the Sound, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, That Saved a Wretch Like Me. Think about it. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Where were you? Where were you when you were lost? But now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. So many times we look at the blind and we think, why can't they just get it together? But one day grace, grace is going to show up. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. How precious did the grace appear the hour I first believe. The hour, the hour, the minute you believed grace was on the scene. Yeah. Think about that. The second you said yes to Jesus, grace was on the scene. Hallelujah. God's grace is greater. Hallelujah. His grace is greater. If you don't know him this morning and you thought you knew him this morning, God wants to reveal his grace. If we're, if we're not where we want to be this morning and we want to go deeper in the things of God, there's grace. If we want to see some family members come to know him, me and my mom and my cousin, the only ones that saved in our whole family, there's grace. There's grace for that. There's grace. Hallelujah. 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 And you know what? I'm just going to skip down because I just feel that, that there's grace. There's grace. Naya, if you would come, there's grace. There's still grace. If we've messed up, there's grace. If we need a change, there's grace. If we need freedom, there's grace. Yes. If you need a family member saved, there's grace. And the last thing that Moses says is, I don't want to go anywhere without 
your presence and God says my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. So can you stand with me please? In the midst of your storm, you can have the presence of God and you can have rest.